you doing i hope you're having a great day we certainly are aren't we wes here we are at another live stream going on down in the city whatever that means so um let's see that song was called all the things you are and that particular set of lessons is on sale now and so that's why i played it Kind of usually done in a swing style, but I wanted to do it as kind of a samba. So, uh, let's see who's here. Tom Johnson, how you doing? Thank you for joining us, Tom. And David Bronson, a rainy day in Florida. Chase me off the golf course, but means I can join the live stream today. A friend of mine is coming down there to play, Chris Montez. He's going to be in uh, Boca Raton. I remember that place. There's two other places. You ought to check them out. I love that oldies stuff, you know. But you say it's a rainy night in Florida. <laughs> Let's see, Gail Severson he is here, and she's talking to you guys. Jim Rolfe. Jim Rolfe, good morning. Aw, oh, the towel. Okay, here it is. Check this guitar out. Uh, Wes, camera. 
this is the Tal Farlow. I, we did a video on it. I've wanted one of these for a long, long time. Um, well, ever since I saw one at Freedom Guitar on Sunset Boulevard, walked in and there was a 66. And then I remember 20 years ago, we went to Nashville and, and at uh, George uh, Groon's place, they had a bun as well. And so anyway, I was able to get this. This is a newer one, which is fine by me because it's got higher frets, which I like. So now somebody had asked a question, do I like, what do I like better now that I've been playing L5s and all this, do I like that or do I like Heritage? They're a little bit different. And <laughs> when I first got this, I thought, wow, oh. Well, number one, it didn't play great. I could see why people sell guitars because it's like they don't play with crap. And so when I got it, I thought, wow, we got to work on this. So I did. And um, it's just set up. It's just set up, getting the neck straight, getting the right strings on it, get everything, get, get rid of some of the fret ends. But I noticed this, these frets are high frets. And so when I first started playing, I thought, man, this is like speed bumps, you know. I like the heritage frets better. So uh, what, uh, but now I'm like, this is starting to grow on me. So the frets, uh, I, I don't know, you know, it's one of those things. So anyway, I'm very excited to have it. See, this is just like a heritage H550 and we're gonna do a comparison of the two. Uh, this has a just does it have a little more mojo? Yeah, because of this curly cue. This is why I wanted this guitar because of this curly cue. All right. Uh, Tom Johnson, nice tar tell Farlow. I remember seeing him play in a small jazz club in New Jersey. Wow, Monday nights were guitar night. All the heavy jazz players back in the 70s played there. Yeah, Tal Farlow, man. Jeez, Louise. Um, I have a whole bunch of his transcribed solos, and I need to start doing lessons on those. Everybody got their coffee? Good. Edward Johns, good evening, from the UK. Somebody from... Uh, Oh, I guess that's it. Switzerland's a different place, isn't it? I had ordered uh, some guitar strings, and the shipping was so high. Um, but anyway, we were able to, to get the shipping down a little bit for them. <laughs> oh, no, it didn't work out that way. I forget. Rainy night in Georgia. What about here's that rainy day? That's right. Yes. Never mind. This guitar, you know what? It didn't come tuned. And I've been working on tuning it. Uh, you know, everyone everyone was saying that, uh, or a few guys said when we posted the video on that, that the neck is too long. Like that, you know, they, oh. they don't like the, the mm -hmm. length of it because it's, do you, do you have an issue with that? No, not at all. As, as a matter of fact, um, depending on where you have the strap button, it, it makes a difference. Uh, but I like the strap button back here, which kind of reminds me, when I got this, it had a for a strap button, a screw and a bolt. And uh, it kind of messed up the thing a little bit. But I thought, wow, why not buy a strap button? But no, I'm not seeing that. I'm not seeing that. Now, uh, this scale length is 25 and a half, I think. So maybe if you're used to playing the 24 and 3 quarters, uh, you can see that. But I'm not feeling it. You see how far back it is here? Oh, nice chord. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I'm not seeing that. But thank you, Wes, for bringing that up. 
Um, enjoyed the video of the towel, especially the version of Moonlight in Vermont. Oh, thank you, David. Good morning, everybody. Not raining, but looks like it might real soon. Where are you at, Calvin? And Tom Johnson said Tal had big hands. He did. He had huge hands and would do all these big fat chords. And uh, my hands have been shrinking. Uh, so. And these. One thing about. A uh, higher fret. It seems like it's easier. Once you get past the the, the feel of it, it's easier. You, you get less fret buzz. If, if should you not hit the frets right right on. Um, well, just an observation. Any Talfar album recommendations? Gibson Boy. Um. Hi, Kirby. How's, how's it going, buddy? Um, you know what? We've got a lot of nice things lined up today, and I should get into that. I should say that right away so people know if they want to stick around or not. And uh, what we're going to talk about, I'm going to show you some guitars that I bought, but also we're going to talk about soloing over autumn leaves. We're going to also talk about, uh, we're going to play Eternal Triangle. Uh we're also going to talk about when you look at a chord or a scale pattern diagram, some of the interesting things you can get off of that if you stop reading it, you know, six string, fifth string, fourth string, you know, start reading it differently. Um, we're going to talk about that as well. Uh, let's see. Mostly I see you playing humbuckers. What your op opinion of the Crawler? Charlie Christians, um, I think they're a little thin on top. Uh, P90s as well. So if you get them tilted right, and those are hard to adjust. But I like P90s. And uh, so, uh, but yeah, it's, it's always the humbuckers I, I've been mainly playing. Uh, Charlie Christians, you know, if you get an original Charlie Christian, sometimes it's kind of noisy, you know, they can be noisy. Just got off a call late to the party, but here, rainy day in New Jersey. Mike, thanks for joining us, Mike. Calvin's in Hawaii. Not a bad place. I like a long scale. To me, the extra tension really helps the strings ring out longer. You can hit them hard if you feel it. You know, the longer the string, the more slinky they become. Uh, but the bending them is harder to reach pitch. Um, W.C. Ray is, is here. So Wes has got some guitar news today which is always fun. And by the way, if you like what Wes does with all these fancy camera angles, I please leave him a tip. Yeah, I got some inter interesting guitar news today. Do you? A couple stories. Really? Oh, well, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I make fun of some people and, you know, <laughs> kind of bash Gibson a little bit. And, oh, good, yeah. good. You know, I, I have a student that uh, is a classical player and wants to get into jazz, and he was saying that he, for his uh, um, juries, you know, you gotta play, you gotta play in front of all the teachers to do your juries, you know, when you're in college. And uh, when he was saying all the teachers, you know, they, they kind of hated each other, he, he thought. And so they would always, uh, I don't know, bag on each other. But I told him, you know, when we would do that at GIT, we mainly, you know, would, would just talk about the students because everybody liked each other. The teachers all liked each other. They didn't hate each other. But then we'd always, there was always people to make fun of. And that, that's, that was always interesting. Anyway. 
The hybrid Ridge Severson set of strings is very nice. High clay, that's Blues Bone 007. So uh, he, he bought some of the, um, these sets of strings, and he likes them. And if Clay likes them, trust me, you'll like them too, because Clay is very, what's the word, discerning? What's the word, Wes? Uh, you're a copywriter. That works. That it's works, funny, okay, yeah. good. Okay, so tell, let me tell you something. I was a little late to the live stream today because UPS just came and they brought a Guild X700. That is the, the L5 of the Guild line. But look at what I've got here. It's crazy. I've got a Guild, I just got this yesterday. I haven't had a chance to work on it. Actually, I uh, it's a Guild X170 and it's in just freaking gorgeous condition. Um, so I can't wait to get this going. I got it at a pretty good price because the pickup doesn't work. And he said he swapped out pickups. And he said it, the pickup doesn't work, the, the neck pickup. So it's got to be a pot, right? Or it's got or a bad wire or the switch. So I'm going to find that out and, and then we'll get this puppy going. And then check this one out up, up here. This is an A150. An A150 has got the floating de and it's a full-size guitar, uh, 24 and 3 quarter inch. Oh, oh my goodness, you brought it. There she is, right out of the box. No bridge. <laughs> oh. Okay, well that... So you can't play it, but you can show it. Okay, well look at this. Thank you, honey. Look at this puppy. So... So this is like the first inspection live on the... Uh, yeah, so this is a solid top. Uh, damage. So tell them about the UPS driver. Well, the UPS driver said, hey, uh, I'm going to make a note of this box because this box is pretty beat up. But I'm looking at the guitar and I see absolutely no problems. You know, when you get a guitar, if you would rub your hands around the binding like this, I know it. you look like a pervert or something, you know, because I love this. I love the shape of a guitar, but you... You can always tell, you can feel when you got binding issues. So, so you know, not that even a binding issue is a big deal, but, uh, you know, a little separation here and there never hurt anybody. Got a little discoloration here. It's a, it, that's a kind of a shame. It's hard on gold, but this is solid top, solid sides and back. I can't wait to hear this. Now, this doesn't have a block. Now, an X500, uh, I think, has got a sound post there. I could be wrong. Anyway, isn't that gorgeous guitar? <laughs> Jeez. So I can't wait to get this puppy up and going. One thing I like about the Guilds is you got a full body guitar like, like the L5, but with the 24 and 3 quarter inch nut width. Wes, you got a spot over there? Mm, no, I'm gonna I'll take it back inside real quick. Well, okay, well let's let's just here, let me just set it here and let's talk about this last one over here before you go. Yikes. That's that's <laughs> Yeah, here, I'll just hold it. Just hold it. Uh, and that's this guy, this X, X150. Now, look at what he did. He took off that, that tailpiece, right? And he put this guy on there. And he said the tailpiece was, was off center on this. And it certainly would because there's a kind of a little, you can see where the old one was there. Um, well, maybe you can't. There, see where they'll that, and so now it's centered. But um, anyway, you put this on, and he's got a fancy bridge. And this is a friend of mine wants this. I mean, I got a friend that he wants every guitar I got, and uh, 
he'll he'll go broke. But uh, he also owns a hundred cars, so I, he's got the money. Um, anyway, so uh, there you have it. We also got in. Uh, what else did we get? I got another Samic Sunburst. Um, I think that's about it. You got that little Stromberg thing? Yeah, that's Stromberg. You know what? We got um, a guitar show coming up in Santa Maria. And that's why I got all these. Take them to the guitar show and then we'll see what happens. As well as I get them for the students, you know. Um, it's kind of like I take the, the risk. Um, because I've gotten guitars where like, I just got a guitar that Samick. And I thought it came with a case. And the guy sent it, it packed really well, but no case. And like, say, hey, you gotta get on, you know, you gotta, you gotta email him back and say, what the hell, man, there's no case. And, uh, oh yeah, well I said there was, you know, I didn't, I didn't say there was in a case and I didn't say there was. It just says guitar. Well, I assume you, when you buy a guitar, it's got a case. Anyway, he was nice enough to refund some money. I said, well, let's split the price of a case. So anyway, um, you know, and I've gotten, I had another one of these that came cracked. You know, it's, yeah, the, so, you know, that's one thing. You never know what you're going to get. You just never know. You, you can... But anyway, so I always kind of look at that when I buy guitars and offer them to students, you know. I took the risk on this too, you know, so uh, so that you don't have to. Any follow-up on the JF you picked up a while ago? Well, it, it sold. It went bye-bye. I thought it was okay. I thought it was a nice guitar, you know. It was nah. You know, at this, at those low line levels, there's a lot of choices, you know. Anyone tried Kirk Mangan strings? I think that's the guy that custom makes them, right? He makes his own strings and he'll do any set for you. A uh, friend of, somebody, somebody told me about him. Anyway, I looked on his website. And, uh, the thing about it is, uh, I thought, oh, never mind. They were kind of expensive and stuff. But. Okay, let's see. Here, uh, uh, let's. Where are we at, Wes? Uh, I don't know. I don't have the rundown in front of me, but we can answer some of these questions. Yeah. Uh, ever. Uh, what What is your actual quilter amp? You still use the Micro Pro, prefer it, right? But you just have that cub. That cub's uh, just in here because we were trying to shoot a video on it. Yeah, yeah, and I've been using it. Uh, I I like this too. I I took, I went and played a gig, and believe it or not, I said to myself when I'm playing it, I I wish I would have brought the cub. I don't know. It just has something something a little different in there. But I do have another amp coming from. Uh, uh, Razor's Edge, uh, a two eight inch cabinet amp coming, and we're gonna do a little thing on that. Uh, have you ever played uh, Heritage Johnny Smith Rose? No. Calvin was asking that. I'd like to. I'd like to. I sure would. What you know, is the ro What does Rose mean? Uh, like rosewood? I think no. It's just got a rose on it. Yeah, you know, oh, it's just their it. name for it. But it's a Johnny Smith uh, Dimensions. So which Johnny Smith, you know, became uh, the Legrand after Johnny Smith it cut off ties with uh, Gibson. So. Great video on the Samic LaSalle. Wait till you see. <laughs> well, we got to reshoot that one, don't we, about the L5 and the LaSalle. 
So yeah, yeah, we're gonna do do some some blind comparison videos. See that, if you guys could tell the difference. <laughs> that audio didn't come out good, right? On that. No, we had to we had to reshoot it. Right. Uh, Adju audio adjustment. <laughs> period. Okay. Uh, would you use your custom set of strings on a 335? No. Uh, not unless you're just going to use that for just jazz and that's it. Then okay. And lower the action as low as you can go. Put the next string. Lower it as fast. And, and it's good. But those are jazz guitar strings. And a 335 to me is a blues guitar. Or, you know, a rock or fusion, you really bend in strings. I want to try your strings on my Heritage 550. Yes, you'll love it. Okay, how often do you change strings? Hi, Buzz. Buzz signed up for camp. We, we did a Skype lesson, and then he signed up for camp. I change them. I try to be really faithful and change them at least once or twice a year. Maybe three times a year. It depends on how much you play it. Yeah, I play them till they go kind of dead. You know, Tommy Tedesco hardly ever changed his strings. You know, if it starts playing out of tune, you got to change your strings. And then what is it? Carol Kay said, I never had time to change my strings. I'd just go down to the store and buy another bass. <laughs> well, yeah, with the price of bass strings, man. <laughs> probably like... 75 bucks at this point. Mm hmm. Robin Ray changes his uh, every Christmas. Oh, that's a good. good. <laughs> Everyone gather around the Christmas tree. <laughs> I'm going to change my guitar strings. Hey, come on, kids. <laughs> Let's change the guitar strings. How do, you, how do you feel about guitars where the neck has twisted just a little? but the intonation and playability is still good. Yeah, isn't that a weird thing that that, that can actually happen? And, uh, but it still plays, it's weird. I would just keep playing it. I've seen a couple guitars like that and I had one at one time and the son of a gun just kept playing. I, I, it was weird, I, I, it's a weird phenomenon. Uh, so anyway, uh, but yeah, I don't buy one that's twisted, but, uh, uh, let's see. What would twist it just like warping from weather or something, or you're like gripping it too hard or. I don't know the wood freaking out and doing something weird, you know, it'd be like this instead of like this going uh, twisting like that, you know, oh. I don't think it goes this way. I've never seen one go bend like this, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Um, anyway, there, there you have it. Um, where are we at? Okay, so let's, let's play Autumn Leaves, you guys. You, you want to do that? What do you think? Yeah, do it. This is a tune that you got to know, right? And we're going to talk about soloing over it. But let me go ahead and play it first. And um, um, let's see, wait a minute. Tell you what, what we're going to do is, uh, <clears throat> what are we going to do? Let me just play the song. Yeah, play for, it first. Forget it, I'll just play it. Then, then talk about the soloing, and then play it again with what you just taught. Okay. <laughs>
unmute, okay. unmute your mic. Okay. So, gee, I, that's Autumn Leaves. And, uh, you know, um, that's, it's, it's a fun little tune, right? It goes between two key centers. One is G and the other is E minor. And it's E harmonic minor. <laughs> because it's got a two chord of a flat five, F sharp seven flat five to B seven. So that sound. Is very dark minor. The other sound is major. Right, so that's all. And then, then minor again. Now, I tell you, here's a cool little scale. If you just use this scale, you, you're golden. And, and the scale I would like to present to you today, get ready. It's a sweet little scale, one that you're gonna love dearly. <coughs> uh, if you it play is, that, that's... <laughs> That's the scale. <laughs> You're golden if you play that. <laughs> it is a E bebop harmonic minor. Bebop means there's like eight tones, or you could call it an octagon scale. But basically what this scale is, is E. Here is a harmonic minor. So root, 9, flat 3, 11. Notice how I call the 11. It's 11 and not a 4. And that this is a 9 and not a 2. Get used to doing that. Okay, 11, 5, sharp 5, not flat 6, because flat 6 is never in a chord. I hate it when people write a flat 6. It's a sharp 5. And then... The next note is a natural uh, seven. So there is harmonic minor. Now what we're going to do is insert one note. The flat seven, the natural seven, and then the root. Now think about this for a second. Think hard. All right, if if we compare this scale over, let's say, let's first start with a uh, E minor, okay? Okay, there's the third, the flat five, the fifth, the sharp fifth, which is a little funky, but it's okay. The natural, or the flat seven, the sharp seven or the natural seven whatever and you get this sound right so here's the scale within the chords okay so it works good now how about this scale against uh, b7 okay there is the um E, which is the worst note you can play against the B7. So let's eliminate that for now. Well, let's, well, we'll go ahead and just, it's an avoid note, let's say. So fifth, sharp fifth. Here's a B, B augmented seven, sharp fifth. Flat seven, root, flat nine, right? Sharp nine, third. Okay, so against this chord, resolution okay against F sharp minor same kind of thing now how about in the major key how F against a minor chord right five six flat seven root nine flat three eleven flat five yeah so it's cool hear it against And 
against the D7. How about that? D7. Here's right, flat 9, 9, flat 9, root, flat 7, 13. Okay, it all works out. How about against G? Right? 6, 7, root, ah, 9, 3, 4, 5, sharp 5. Sounds like this. So it's going to sound good against all of those chords. Whoops. So let me play Autumn Leaves. I'm just going to solo, just using that scale. We got to get past this. All right, here we go. Here I go now. Okay, you with me on that? It all works really good, doesn't it? Now, there's another scale that's really close to this. Oh, but wait a minute, before we, before we go any further, I want to show you this one thing. And that is, if you look at a scale and you think about it, and you try to get a pattern there. Now, I started with my third finger there, right? Now, start with your third finger here and do the same pattern. You know, it's a little bit different, but you, you dig. Whoop. same pattern that just that simple pattern okay now let's add one more uh, and one more thing here let's add a blues scale e blues so Hear that difference? Now I'm going to add this blues scale in with the bebop. Now let's see what we get. Thank you. 
right, so between those two scales, you can go crazy, crazy bonkers. So, as a little side note, you, when you start doing... Uh, never mind. Um, start doing the chords of those scales. You get a lot of cool things. I hope to do a lesson on that soon. So I was trying to think of an easy way to show somebody how to solo over that song. Now, all we're doing is staying in one tonal center, right? And we're letting, which is E, bebop, harmonic minor, and we're letting the chords react to that scale. So it's a kind of a different concept as opposed to soloing around the chords and changing all that stuff. So, so let me show, show you the difference. Here's soloing around changes. get the idea anyway so um, I think that's kind of an interesting thing experiment with that and I have a lot of lessons on the song autumn leaves so you ought to check them out okay I hope you enjoyed that now where are we at up here Wes some of these people are talking and on here uh, yeah so we got um, a lot of talk about the twisted necks clay says my john paisano has slightly twisted neck dialed in fine with fret job i guess fret dress check relief on bass side of neck and didn't check treble side hmm. mobile mutant is new to our channel and he's learned so much by purging our videos <laughs> uh yeah thanks to all the information we provided Buzz, my 59 ES125T twisted, but the playability is affected. Uh, Edward Johns, my arch top twisted just a little bit, but has been stable for the past year, and it still plays and tunes great. Hmm. Uh, Robin Ray, great sound slash mix. Yeah, that's because uh, we're trying to kill the talking mic while we play the tracks. Oh, I keep forgetting to do that. Well, it's, it's hard when you're doing a lesson because you're talking the whole time, but when you're yeah. just going to play a song, you cut it, and it just sounds so much better. Um, let's see. Whoops, your battery's running low. Yes, it is. Oh, Camera. no. You can All right, so I hate scales, and so does my wife, and Gail says she hates them too. <laughs> you know what? Uh, you know... A football player does sit-ups, right? When they do, they do push-ups, sit-ups, sit-ups. But when they go one, two, three, hike, they don't jump down and do sit-ups and push-ups. Well, scales are like that. Those are your sit-ups and push-ups. You don't necessarily take them out and use them in a gig. But if you can't play a scale, trust me, you're not going to be able to play a good solo. I don't care what you, somebody's told you or whatever you say. You, I tell you one, something... Joe Pass was in uh, Ernie Ball Guitars one time. And the, he, Joe Pass can play scales like you wouldn't believe. Now, does he play them when he does solos, when you hear him playing with Ella? No, but he can play scales. So, okay. Um, thanks for... Uh, uh, here, there's a good question up above there uh, from Steve White. Um do you think it's cheesy to play out live with backing tracks? No. Um, I tell you what, you know what people hear? They hear, you know, um, they hear a feeling, you know, they hear a familiar song. If it's got backing tracks, that's great. 
You know, how do you play a tune like Breezin' without backing tracks? You can't, right? So, yeah, go out, go ahead and use them, you know. Somebody doesn't like them, they probably won't tell you. But no, I don't think it's cheesy. It's a, it's a, it's a survival tactic. Unfortunately, if they'd shell out enough money for a band, you wouldn't have to bring them in. So bring in a, a backing track. And I'll tell you, the backing track doesn't scream when you put them in the trunk like a band, you know. So, yeah, go, go ahead and use those. Yeah, plus you have more money for yourself, right? You don't have to pay, yeah, you don't have to pay the band. And you get to keep all the tips for yourself. Oh yeah. Kind of divvy them out yeah. for the band. Oh yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. You'll be rolling, you may be making tens of dollars. So yeah, it's 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 uh I would go ahead and play. I personally, if it's a two hour gig, I generally don't take tracks. If it's a three hour gig I take tracks. If it's going to be a loud gig where like some bar or something, you know, and people, you know, you, you play some tracks, they don't care, man. They're used to karaoke anyways. And all you are is karaoke guitar anyways. Um, there's a question here. Is it necessary to replace the nut or modify the slots when installing your custom strings from Mup Bup? No, no, they should fit in there. Uh, Robin Ray asks, are those stock Gibson pickup? Yes. Uh, I'm currently, oh, if you're using 10s to 46, yeah, it'll, it'll still work. No problem. The lowest note on here is a, is a 48. So the lowest string. So you, you, you'll be cool. Kirby. Thanks for the insight. Walk and Bill ignore their BS. What are you referring to? Well, probably whatever. people that are, are that would complain about tracks. Oh, and, okay. And just ignore them, which I agree with. Yeah. Uh, Bebop scales pretty cool from David. Love the scales <laughs> comment. Scales of justice. Uh, okay, here we go. Does it make sense to mix it up? i.e. I could try some arpeggios, etc., to pick out chord tones and then use these scales to help me out when I get kind of stuck. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, that's probably what you want to do. Um, so if you continue to do that over and over with uh, the scale, it's nice to outline some chords too. Is the X700 for sale? Well, yeah, but not yet. Uh, I guess. Okay, but the joy of music is to play with other musicians. Well, that is true. That is true. I just saw a little comment on Facebook. It said, people don't hear the music, they feel the music. Something like that. I think that's true. All right, so anyway, there it was, soloing over there. Do you want to go over to Reverb, Wes? Uh, or do you want to do your news? No, let's do Reverb here. Um, hold on. So, you know, I, I look all over Reverb. And, uh, um, <laughs> you know, somebody here has an ES-125. And ES-125 basically was a student guitar back in the day. I don't know of any player who really played it that much, you know. But look at the price spread of these guitars. Uh, when you start looking around, Wes, go up a little bit there. When, when you see there on the price spreads on all these, if you want it between those eras and that and blah, blah, blah. I mean, they used, these guitars used to be cheap. And now they're... I, I, of course, I sound like a broken record, always talking about the price of things, but... Gosh, they're a nice little guitar. They're fun. I like them a lot. I think they're they're cool. But really, bottom line, they they were a low end guitar for students, pretty much. Look at that, four grand, forty eight, twenty nine. Yeah, this one right here is sixty nine. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> wow. 
Yeah, so um, get them while they're hot. There, you know, there's an ask and then a getting price. You know, that's just the way it is. That's crazy. Um, but those are fun guitars. They, they really are. I don't really care if it's got a cutaway or not. You know, I don't play up there that high. You know, if you play it up, if it doesn't have a cutaway, you can always get a G. Uh, something, something, and, and you can get an A. Um, so this real estate here is valuable real estate that they cut out of here. It changes the tone. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, isn't that funny, the price of those guitars? Um, back in the day, I mean, they were like, Two, three hundred bucks, you know. Now, do you have one of these? No, no not anymore. But sure. that that's cool, cool guitar, rockabilly. You know, but it's, there's no, uh, you, you, you potentially have feedback issues with that particular guitar. Uh, there's no post or anything in there. It's cool looking. It is cool looking. But, you know, I, it's not as cool as this. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, oh, it burns longer without a cutaway. Well, that's true. You get a lot more heat from your guitar. Um, is it still if you go to Duke? What what does all this mean? Is that X seven hundred for sale? Is that okay? All right, so now what, Wes? Um, I, you got you got something else to play? Sure. And I'll get ready for the guitar news. Right after this short break. <laughs> Coming right back. Yeah, okay. <laughs>
unmute the mic. Let me try that again. <laughs> you put me on the spot there, Wes. Oh, that was great. Um, there's a few more questions real quick we'll handle. Uh, is the LaSalle size an issue or is it comfortable to play? Um, it's comfortable to play as long as you hold it right. But it's um, big. It's big. It's an L5. So you hold it across your body like, like this, just so I'm holding this. I, I got no problem. If you play it like this, yeah, it's big, big guitar. But if you hold it across your body with the strap, it's easy. It's more comfortable than a smaller body, I think. It's all depends on how you hold it. What's going on with this guitar? The neck twisted? It's got a twisted neck. Uh, let's see. What do you think of the less expensive Godin guitars, uh, Godin Fifth Avenue? Uh, you know, no, no opinion. I, I played it at an AM show once. I'll probably see one this weekend at the, at the guitar show. Because one of the dealers that I know is going there is a good in dealer. Oh, nice. We can try it out. We'll, You're going to we'll check you, it out. We'll have you play it for a second. And we'll probably do a video do from what? The, on the guitar show. So we, oh. can, we can include that maybe. Sure, sure. Um, <coughs> let's see what else we got here. Uh, what are what are your thoughts on keeping your arch tops hanging on the wall versus in a case? I live in Florida, so humidity is always around fifty, but the AC could be drafty. That's from Craig. Oh, good, good question. Okay, I'll tell you what. Um, when you you hold hang your guitars with the hanger here. Um, you really got to be careful with the <coughs> the lacquer guitars and and the rubber or whatever that holds it up there. I've noticed because uh, I had a bunch of them and I actually made my own and I put a plastic tubing around the uh, uh, the dowel coming out and I noticed that it. It really reacted to the finish here. And I go to kick it down, and I think, what the hell happened? Oh, no. And, uh, yeah, so there's there's one of the things that I made. You really got to be careful of that stuff, that plastic or rubber or whatever they put there. So what's the solution? It's really simple. Take a cloth and put it just on there, a, a cotton cloth. And so it rests on the cotton cloth. And then you'll be, you'll be golden. So I, 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 think, I think you'll be okay. Humidity, uh, you know, the fact that it's uh, Florida, you got a lot of humidity. <clears throat> Air conditioning can dry it out, but you know, I think this guitar came from Florida. And I was surprised at the oxidation that was on it, you know. Um, Let's see. So anyway, does that help? Ye yeah, it helps me a lot. Thanks. Thanks for that. <laughs> um, fan fan arch tops. I have one of these good price, but not maple tone. I'm assuming you're talking about a Godin Fifth Avenue there. So good to know. Uh, Buzz Roberts, when you are soloing, do you think about the changes? Yes. Um, <laughs> okay. Could you play the LaSalle? That's in the other room. Uh, can't get it. Blue Moonlight in Vermont. So you got that, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway. Uh, on the road again. Uh, Hey, Rich, where do you personally buy your guitars from, please? Several places. I've bought them off of eBay, off of Reverb, and then dealers that I know, mainly from 
lots of dealers <clears throat> that I've known. <clears throat> Craigslist, too. Craigslist, yeah. And I don't know if I'm going to do that too much longer. I, I, I just got done buying all these guitars, and I thought, this is very time-consuming because it takes time to find them. And then, you know, you spend, you spend an hour or two looking for these things. And then if you don't buy something, it's like a waste, you know. If you, if you don't buy it, it's like, dude, God. <clears throat> so, um, so you got to wait for the right thing. And, but uh, and you want to go with a reputable dealer, one, somebody that knows how to ship something. And it's, it's kind of um, tricky. But I, there's several dealers that I know too that I've bought stuff from. So, um, Buzz bought his 125T for 70 bucks in the 70s. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what. I'll give you 140 double your money right now today. Yeah, I'm sure he's gonna say yes to that. Yeah. Uh, um, and Robin. I am. I'm going to bring my camera to the guitar show and plan to put something oh. together. I don't know. We'll see what, what I come up with, but I'm sure it'll be good. Yeah. Yeah. So I've been thinking about, you know, I, I know, you know, um, I've been actually thinking about, because a lot of, I've had several guys say, hey, would you sell my guitar for me? And all that and, and stuff, and so I don't know. I've been tossing around that idea too, but I'm realizing. Wait a minute, man! I don't want to be a guitar salesman. You know what am I doing? I mean, it's kind of fun, but uh, it's not my lifelong goal. Anybody can buy and sell guitars. I know guys that do really well buying and selling guitars, and they can't play with crap. <laughs> no offense. If you're yeah, one of yeah. those people. You want to name some names. <laughs> but uh, uh, so I'm thinking, what am I doing, man? I, I need to, you know, I, I got in to make music and then here I am playing, doing this, you know. But it's kind of fun and I have experience doing it because I worked at guitar shops and stuff. And so whatever, you know. Anyway. All right. So you ready for some guitar news? Guitar news. Come on, news me. Yeah. Okay, so uh, here we go. Gibson out with a new guitar model that's pretty cool and unique. However, the price tag is not cool or unique because all new Gibsons are overpriced. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it is pretty cool. So uh, here it is, and it's called uh, the Gibson Theodore. So here's the backstory. It was originally designed in 1957 by Gibson's former president, Theodore Ted mm. McCarty. He's the guy who developed the Les Paul, the Flying V, Explorer, SG. Uh, he drew this guitar, but it never made it to development. It just the plans have kind of been sitting around for the last 60 years. And uh, so Gibson decided to start building it hmm. yeah wow that's cool um lightweight thanks to the alder body it has that walnut center strip down the middle nice uh so it looks cool and it's got that kind of those two little cutaways that make it look i mean it definitely looks unique for sure it looks like a duck duck tail there those things <laughs> does that look like a duck uh a little know. bit maybe i don't know um, anyway, P P90 pickups, and um, we can actually uh, hear it real quick. Um, here is uh, Joe Bonamassa playing it. I'll play it just a quick little thing from it. Oh, hold on, hold on, sorry. Let me turn my volume on, and here we go. What a blast from the past this is. I love it. <laughs> So the design of this guitar predates what people know as the double cut Les Paul Jr. So there you go. So I don't know. It sounds pretty cool for uh, a rock guitar, right? I don't know. I think it's yeah. It's always great when when people demo a guitar with a full on distortion. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you really tell what it sounds like. 
but yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's got a. It's, it's kind of cool looking, you know. It's, it's yeah, definitely different for what. Uh, oh God, look at how talk about a long neck! Holy crap! Yeah, the thing did look. Jeez, long. Louise, That's, that <laughs> freaking nut is in another state. <laughs> Dang. Uh, okay, so yeah, it, it's great, right? Yeah, we love it. Yay, woo. But uh, <laughs> so here's what doesn't sound so good about it is obviously the price tag. Oh, really? It's $5,000. Really? Wow. $5,000. So just think, you could have had that instead of that Tal Farlow. <laughs> you totally <laughs> messed up, man. Yeah. So, yeah. Bummer for you. Uh, I know. God damn it, man. I'm sure you're kicking yourself right now. Yeah. Uh, all right. <laughs> uh, so speaking of guitars, uh, th there's a new guitar, a uh, new jazz guitar on the market, um, which is pretty cool. It's not. Uh, it's it's definitely a little different too. Here it is right now. It's from this mm. company, Veilet. This is the Veilet Lyric, and the uh, the concept behind it was to have elements of a big jazz box, but with a smaller profile, like mainly for comfort. So um, they wanted to go after extreme playability, comfort. I guess it's kind of lighter weight. It's got a nice balance. They say it has perfect intonation throughout the, the neck. Uh, single pickup um, hmm. is a Seymour Duncan jazz humbucker. Uh, it's spruce top, mahogany back and sides. Um, so they're, they're, they made it because they're hoping that, that jazz, jazz guys will use this as their main like gigging guitar because it's, it's light, it's How comfortable. Much? You could sit there and play it for three or four hours and not you know, have a hurt shoulder or whatever. The company's from Woodstock, New York. Um, hmm. It's got a 25-inch scale length, 14 uh, 14 inch lower bout. Oh. Um, so here we can, I, I found a video of, of them playing that. So we can, let's hear hear this for a second. So, I don't know, pretty cool. Definitely not, not, Sounds like you, you can obviously hear a lot of the acoustic sound coming through there as opposed to the amp. Right. But yeah. um, but it's cool looking, right? I mean, definitely got a cool design. And I, I mean, so you can see how he's holding it, which is without a strap. Right. So, I mean, obviously, if you played a big old Gibson like that, it, your arm would be killing you after an hour. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, this is I thought was interesting. It's pretty new on the market. And Did they say what the body depth is? Body depth, uh, I do not know. No, I do not know that. It looks like it's only half there. Yeah, it's not super fat, but it's not very skinny either. It's probably yeah. like around the same as that Tal Farlow. Yeah, three inch, something like that. Right. Yeah. Uh, maybe I think it was a little less than three, a two and three quarters, maybe. Uh, yeah. Um, anyway, the uh, the price tag on that, thirty five hundred bucks MSRP. Um, so, I don't know, not a not yeah. a rip off, but I don't know, might be for a handmade guitar. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, all right, so we've talked about Slash before on here. Um, <laughs> yeah. Slash. Uh, you know, in, but here's another interesting story from the Guns N' Roses guy. Um, let's see, one of his newest amps was designed by mm -hmm. Alexander Dumble, who right. died right, who died right. back in January. So, right. the, one of the last amps he designed happened to be for Slash, oh, nice. um, which Slash is very, very grateful for. Uh, Slash says that. He had heard about um, Dumble, but he had no idea really what they were, what the amps were, until he started recording his last album. And the producer threw out this amp and was like, hey, here's this Fender amp that's been customized by Alexander Dumble. Mm -hmm. And then Slash played it and just loved it. And so like a couple days later, Slash was on the phone with 
with Dumble, called him up and had uh, one specifically made, one of those. He, I guess he does a lot of those Fender. He takes a Fender and then customizes it, um, beefs it up, apparently. Um, yeah, sure. He's yeah. built those for, I mean, people, huge names. John Mayer, Robin Ford, Santana, right, right, Stevie yeah. Ray Vaughan, Eric Clapton. And, I mean, obviously these amps are are collectible and expensive like this one right here right. on reverb is half a million dollars huh wow um, boy you get what you pay for yeah so have you ever played uh, an amp of his or, or heard no uh, steve trovato had one for a long time i i heard it um he called me up one day many 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 years ago and said hey i want you to play my amps and i said well fine and we talked for a long time. He talked a lot. He was a good talker. And anyway, um, no, nothing ever happened. Huh. They're not really a jazz amp. Yeah, definitely. They're more of like that blues rock kind of thing. Uh, anyway, do you, I, we got probably time for one more. Yeah. Okay. All, All right. right. Well, the, let it rip. Let it, you're, here, you're on a roll, man. Here's one for the... Uh, I've got more money than I know what to do with category. Uh-huh, uh -huh. I like that. Um, music Radar reporting this. Gibson and... Why is, put, it, put the camera on you. Oops, sorry. Uh, Gibson and uh, Triumph Motorcycles have teamed up mm. to celebrate the legacy of the 59 Les Paul Standard and the 59 Bonneville T120. So they both came out wow. the same year. And wow. now they're making this new one-of-a-kind edition of both of them. And so, nice. obviously, the um, the motorcycle has features from the guitar, vice versa. There's some features from the motorcycle worked into the guitar. Um, I mean, they, they definitely, both definitely look super cool. I mean, you can't deny that motorcycle is not cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, the guitar, pretty pretty cool looking as well. See that pit guard there? Um, mm -hmm. It yeah. kind of looks like the engine there. Oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah. It's got the, the, the heat fans. Right. So um, here's, uh, well, here's one thing that I just, I was like, I, I scratched my head over this, and that oh. is... The this pick custom pick holder. <laughs> pick holder on the motorcycle. <laughs> okay, oh, so I'm... like here's one of my question. <laughs> would you ever use these? No. Like who would actually like pull what? up pull a pick out of their pocket, put it on there? I mean obviously it's for looks, but I mean it's kinda dumb. Obviously you've never seen Rost about with Elvis. Wasn't it Rost about where he He'd have a guitar in his back, driving a motorcycle through Hidden Valley. Yeah, but did he also have pockets where he could just keep his picks? Oh, you know? he he didn't have pockets on his pants. No, they were tight. Or what no. about like a gig no. bag or your case? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, here's what I picture. It's like a guy going out and he like pulls a, a pick out of his pocket and he's going to a gig and he puts the pick in the pick holder and then he gets off the bike, pulls the pick off holder. And puts it back in his pocket. <laughs> or like, I don't know. It just, I thought it was pretty, uh, pretty over the top, you know? Yeah, yeah, you kind of think so. Jeez. Um, so anyway, I, and like, I, I couldn't find the, uh, the price of either of these, but I imagine they are through the roof and uh, limited to very rich people who have a lot of money to yeah. kind of just waste dare i say it maybe perhaps posers in both worlds like a biker <laughs> is never gonna buy like a true biker is never gonna buy that bike a true guitar player <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. is never gonna buy that guitar so there you go posers only for that uh yeah that well thank you thank you wes for that interesting information it's always good to be up on the news in our guitar world. And, I, you know, when you were doing this, I was thinking to myself, you know what pisses me off about Gibson is they basically hardly will build an L5. They, they build ES-175s, but any solid top guitar they hardly will never touch, you know, anymore. It's 
rare, isn't it? The jazz guitars. And they just keep rehashing this, the Les Paul, and, the, and then now they got this other crazy guitar, which, you know, a guitar like this takes a long time to make. You just don't make it in a day. You know, like uh, like an Elf, like a ES, uh, like an SG or something, you know. It takes a long time to make. You've got to let it dry and stuff. And, you know, there's glue involved. The, 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 these other guitars, there's not even any glue, really. Uh, right. Maybe. That's what I was thinking. It's all, it's like, it's all, like, the bracing and stuff that you don't see on the inside of those guitars. Oh, yeah. It's it's kind of, it takes a lot more craftsmanship. And then now they're, like, trying to make these guitars the same price range. I yeah, like, it's just, just give me a break. Yeah, freaking... I like uh, some comments here. Um, Clay says there was a reason that never made it to development. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. <laughs> um, yeah. And Mick Mac says uh, when I started jazz guitar, I played an Explorer. No joke. I wondered why people didn't want to play with me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, when you show up to a jazz gig with one of those, yeah, it's uh, you know people hear with their eyes. To be honest, <laughs> you know, so, hey, that's crazy. Yeah, uh, R Robin Ray says, MSRP 5000, try to find one under seven. Yeah, which I I was poking around on Reverb, and they are ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Um, I guess it's a collector kind of deal, you know, whatever. Uh, I, I mean, Joe I Bonamassa could probably afford that. So, yeah. So good for him. Yeah. As mentioned by Clay. Uh, I like Jim's comment here. Playing that veilette through an amp with a tweeter. Hmm, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't sound too good. That's what I, I felt bad when I watched that video. I'm like, God, they really just did not do their own product any justice by putting yeah. that video out there. Yeah. But if you look at the video, it only has <sighs> like 800 views or something. So they're obviously not pushing that video hard, but it does not. Yeah, I mean, if you're searching around for that guitar and then you find that video, yikes. Yeah, yeah, I, I hear you. Yeah, I, I, I don't know, I don't know, man. It's a, it's a, it's a weird time. I, I often think, well, not often, but I, I've thought about, you know, if I would make the jump and start playing blues again and all that and, and start going down that highway we'd probably get more viewers you know or whatever but if that's what it which I, I do like blues and stuff in those guitars but god dang it man it's just endless crap of you know pedals and amps and guitars and it's like god I, I don't think I have enough years in me left to go down that road you know what I mean Shit. Oh, crap. Did I say that? Gibson is just into the money. You know what? Um, the thing about Gibson is it's a billion dollar company. You know what I mean? So it's like you build a company and it gets bigger and bigger and then it becomes a big freaking monster. You got to feed it. And uh, I think all companies are like that. Um, it's hard to keep that balance between something. Look at Heritage. I mean, Heritage guitars are fantastic. And they're back ordered like a year and a half, two years. You know, they're set. They're okay. They're, they know what they got. But, but the consumer is like, hey, come on, I want to get one of those. And there's good luck. So anyway, uh, yeah, that's just me venting. I I agree. And yeah, I was I was trying. Mick Max says I was is trying to tell you that I would like a new motor motorcycle, so you can get that. <laughs> My birthday is actually coming up, so. Oh, uh, the motorcycle. You can, that I'll take. Give me both. The, give me the 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 Les Paul and the the motorcycle. Motorcycle, yeah. 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 That, well, you know, you if you drive a motorcycle and carry a Les Paul. You've got to have an amp. There's no amp. I mean, if it's an acoustic guitar, you can't just stop and then you can play, you know. But uh, 
shouldn't they build an amp in the gas tank or something? Yeah, exactly. Like something you play. Yeah, that would actually be cool. Yeah. But so, of course, they're not going to. A Dumbo. Do Get a Dumbo in the, in, the, in the Triumph gas tank. Of course, they're not going to do it. If it's cool, they're not going to do it. Yeah, that's true. Um, let's see. <laughs> WC Ray, there's a Telecaster somewhere in your house. You definitely have a Telecaster. I don't have a Tele. I have a G&L. There's another... Well, it's a Telecaster, though. It's better than it's a It's a Hell, Hellcaster. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it's like a hollow body thing, right? Mine is a, mine is a, a, a semi-hollow body thing. Uh, my Telecaster, and I, 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 I think it sounds fantastic. It's, and it's got a P90 on in the front and stuff. Telecasters are weird, man. Uh, I don't know. Oh. Uh, Tom asked, "Can you play that E bebop scale in all twelve keys?" Yeah, why not? Or is he asking me, can I personally do uh, I don't. I hope he's not asking you to personally do it. I don't want to do that. that don't like make a, me do that. Lot, I don't want to. But if you're just asking that, then yeah. Yeah, like of the, course. All, in every scale, right? Bingo, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, that was a good news thing. That's so funny because, God dang it. I don't know what goes, goes through Gibson's brain. You know, um, I, w I meant to do this last time. Let's, let's look at this. This is the, the scale diagram of Do the Dorian Mode workout. And these are all the scales of Dorian Mode. Now, one of the things that I like to do, and I would encourage you to do this too, when you look at a diagram, instead of going like one, three, four, one, you know, going and reading it this way, reading it at a, at a zigzag and stuff like that. And you wouldn't believe some of the combinations you get. Uh, it's really cool, like the D Dorian here. Let's see, what if I went... Well, that's a nice sound, isn't it? Or, or let's see, when... It... It's some nice little phrases that that you wouldn't normally come up with. Just look at the diagram and go. What if I went instead of here's the diagram for D Dorian as an E as an A shape. But what if I went? Now I got a cool little lick. All right, so I went one, three, three, one. by reading it an, another way. Just take a look at this and go, let's say, oh, let me pick this out, then do this, do this, do that, do that. Just partials, partials of the diagram. And you get, especially if you skip a string every once in a while, you skip a string, you get a cool sound. Ooh, that's cool. I would encourage you, let me do that again, since you went up close. You get the idea? So within a scale or a diagram, force yourself to look at it a little bit differently. <clears throat> and, you know, Go, boop, go like this, you know, mess around with it. Instead of always going, okay. All right, hey Wes, there's a, Will Ray says, uh, 
what are the links to tip west you got to give them a tip thank you they're in the description I in think, the description hopefully. can you use eb bop over g or e minor yeah remember this is e harmonic minor bebop bebop harmonic minor yes you can yes as demonstrated earlier you got to play the gnl next week that's what i i was saying we should bring out one guitar per week that isn't a jazz guitar just to okay have a little fun so all right i think we might do that well, look at um, it's been really cool having you guys around. Uh, Wait, did you play Eternal Triangle? Oh, yeah, yeah. Can you play that? Is or this, did you? Is this a test? Test? Well, I just put it in the description and <laughs> didn't want to pay pay off, pay it off. Oh, I dig, I dig. Yeah, yeah. This is one of the tunes we're going to use at the camp. Don't let it scare you. It's only for the more advanced guys. And uh, we're not going to do it this fast, by the way, either. But there's a chord every, every uh, if not every measure, there's, it's every two beats.
was kind of it. <laughs> you know, it's funny when you restarted in the middle of the song, no one could hear what you said because your mic was muted, so it looked like you were just like... <laughs> and then you <laughs> started. <laughs> well, good thing my mic was muted. Right, yeah. Yeah, well... He was just like, God, I'm trying to... God. <laughs> I feel jittery. I've been pl too much coffee. All right, so some more some more comments here from uh, Mark Wilgren's or or sorry. Uh, what? Sorry, sorry. I'm I'm looking I'm looking at something. Oh yeah, sorry. Mark Wilgren's. He has a GNL Blues Boy, and it sounds great. Oh. And then Clay says uh, one jazz. One non-jazz guitar a month, not weekly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm with that. Let's see. Um, Fantacone from Philly says, hi, all. What's up? Oh, we have somebody from Switzerland. Yeah, that was, uh, that's Mick Mac there. Thanks yeah, to that. mail three sets of strings to Switzerland was uh, 40 bucks. Oh, man. Yeah. What a bargain. Well, anyway, you guys, I want to thank everybody for, for coming and joining us. That's real, real nice. Wes, thank you for doing all this work. Yeah, and David Bronson, thanks for gave, gave me a tip. So thank you for that. Oh, that. good. I'll give you a tip. You Get here a little earlier. You get plenty of tips. <laughs> Don't worry. And thank you, Gail. You know, here's a trick. You know, you know when your hands get sticky? You you go like this on your uh, uh, on your on your nose. You get some of this oil. And then you. It's a good way to keep your strings nice and clean. You know what? So why don't we? It's best time of the week. Oh, so I thought he meant move the time. set the intonation on this. I never did. Anyway, I'll see you next week. Appreciate you being here with us. Hope you have a blessed week.